to The Point. I'm your host, Eric Mitchell. we got a great Wednesday show for you today. Great guests. I, I know I say that quite often that we always have great guests, but today's guests are amazing. And as you've noticed since we've started the show here on BizTV, a lot of topics that we talk about go around building your small business and making you a mainstream player. We've had amazing guests on our show from Coca Sexton, another Army veteran. And today we're keeping the theme going. It's not always about veterans, but we have some amazing veteran entrepreneurs out there. So we bring them on here whenever we can, because here at To The Point, it's not just about putting veterans on your TV on May and November. No, veterans are bad mamba jambas 24 hours a day, seven days a week. we got some amazing entrepreneurs out there and they don't hang their veteran status around their neck. I just go find them and go, wow, you also happen to be a veteran. So what better way to support America and be an amazing, amazing, amazing person than to support our veterans? So. That's what we do. Who, who would you trust? Would you rather trust a career politician or a vet who probably knows what he's talking about and build a business and has been through hard times, wasn't hand to him through a silver spoon? That's what we're doing here today. So we have amazing guests for you today. Uh, our first guest today is the amazing Stephen Kuhn. Stephen Kuhn is a army veteran who went on to become an amazing uh, how do I put this? A business, I don't want to say business coach because he's beyond a business coach. A business analyst where he helps rock bands, royalty, celebrities with building their brands, building them out so their businesses grow. Not building brands as in a marketing sense, but building a brand as in a business sense. Think Fortune 500 meets Kanye West. Kind of that slam in. Well, Stephen has written a book with his business partner, also a United States uh, Army vet. Uh, he's a Green Beret, Lane Ballone. And Lane and Stephen wrote this amazing book called, about being a humble alpha. Now, we all talk about alpha males, but one of the things that I've always liked when I've talked to fellow successful veteran entrepreneurs is the fact that they've been able to deal with the struggle of entrepreneurship going from a veteran to, or going from the military to a veteran, which basically folks at the end of the day, veteran is just a fancy word for a civilian that did four to eight to 10 to 12 to 20 years of service to their country. It doesn't mean that they should be slapped on the back and given a high five all the time, but dang it, they're pretty good folks and most of them create amazing businesses. That being said, our other guest today isn't a veteran, but he's also on the front lines. He is a doctor, like a real doctor, not like a chiropractor or a dentist, a real doctor who opened a PR firm. That's right, and he helps find He helps find fellow, there we go, Eric can speak English, I promise you I can put together a sentence structure on this Wednesday, helps folks find amazing, helps other doctors come on TV and get coverage, and it's been extremely helpful during COVID-19. So we're going to have him on the show today, too. So it's extremely exciting to have these two guests. Both of them are frontline warriors who are doing amazing things to help people's businesses grow. Now, that's what we're going to talk about today. But it's been in the news lately that a certain veteran brand or their founder has been in the brand talking about how he suddenly left his company. Now, folks, let's just be real here. If you are a founder of a company and you leave it and everybody knows it's successful, it's almost... <laughs> if not highly unlikely, completely unlikely, that you would leave your company without a penny in your pocket. Instead, to go sign up and do a GoFundMe where you scam and feed off of people, that's not the way that you should be doing business. So that person will never see the light of day on this show ever. Never. The guy will never see airtime here. We'll just make sure of it because I already instructed our staff, that dude doesn't see airtime. I don't fall for his bad boohoo stories. Nope. It's called karma. And sometimes karma needs to bite some business owners. It's bitten quite a few of us, but that's not what we're here for today. So when we come back from the break, we're going to have my good friend, Stephen Kuhn here. We're going to talk about his book and talk about what he does and how you can connect with him. If you're a veteran, you do want to listen to him. Even if you're a business owner, you want to listen to him. And then we're going to talk about media, my favorite topic, with our final guest for the day. And don't forget this Thursday, that's tomorrow, we've got Jeff Attila, Brandon Steiner joining us, and a few other special guests talking about NFL week three and what's coming up on week four. See you guys after the break.
Welcome to To The Point. I'm your host, Eric Mitchell, and we are back from that awesome commercial break. If you're just joining us, we got a great leadoff guest today on this beautiful Wednesday and the last day of September. Can you believe it, folks? The last day of September. Uh, but let's not waste any time. Let's get to my guest, another guest calling internationally. So this is pretty dope, but he's an American, so don't throw your don't need a translator. But uh, calling in, we have him here, my good friend. Uh, amazing. Just wrote a book with his partner in a fel- uh, Green Beret. He's not a Green Beret. He's a tanker, but... They wrote a book. It is called Unleash Your Humble Alpha. You have to check it out. We're going to learn about that. We're going to talk a little bit about everything business. So let me welcome to the show my good bud, Stephen Kuhn. Stephen, how are you doing, bud? Hey, Eric. How are you doing? Really cool to be here. Thanks so much. I had to have you on here. I ordered your book. I didn't even tell you I was ordering it. No, you didn't. I saw you guys promoting it on LinkedIn, one of my favorite platforms. I was like, I'm going to check it out. I love it because it was the name that actually caught my eye. It was like, ooh, I like Humble Alpha, right? Because it's I think a lot of us that are in the business world and in leadership know that, and I think you and I, we've had this discussion and it wasn't, it wasn't on national TV, but now we're going to have it, uh, (laughs) where, you know, being an alpha male and being a leader, you have to be humble, right? It's a key, it's a key ingredient. And I know I I can put my paw in the air and say, I've been the opposite where I was not humble. I mean, both of us, right? I think that's what we had talked about. And Your book really, like for me, it resonated because I've gone through all these changes since probably the last time we were physically around each other, which I believe was Orlando, which was like two years. Orlando, ago. Florida, yeah. And, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, I gotta have Steve on the show to talk about this book. So, before we jump into the book, just real fast so folks know you. So you were in the army. You're just right. a little bit older than me, so we we won't punish you. You have that wise beard. You got the wise wisdom beard, or as, wise beard, or yeah. as you've been told, the wealthy <laughs> beard. So we'll go with that if that's what it takes. I want to get gray like Steve then. But so your background, what led you and your business? It, it, is Lane your business? How do you want to? What are we calling Lane? I mean, besides Lane, awesome. Lane is, is <laughs> Lane is co-author and my business partner in the veteran space. Okay, awesome. So what led you guys to write this book? I know you guys have done a lot. You have your group on Facebook. I believe it's still the largest veteran entrepreneur group. I I don't know of any other large group. So Veteranpreneur Tribe, if I said that right, I know that there's always a dispute over saying it the right way. But you guys have that. So the book, what led you guys to come up with this book? You two, Green Beret meets a tanker. Right. How did we get to here? (laughs) And a a 21 year difference as well in age. So, you know, yeah. So we're, we're, we're covering two, uh, two generations there. So we even caught the the rear end of the uh, millennial uh, generation. So we (laughs) we have a wide breadth, but the reason we wrote it, well, we actually met uh, Lane came to one of my retreats in Peru where we work with uh, sacred plant medicine to unlock, you know, the truth inside. And uh, we met there and that's where the, that's where the name humble alpha came from. And we decided, hey, let's work together. We just feel like there's a jive there. And we did. And then when I sat down and we went through everything, we were so aligned. I said, this is ridiculous. I live like this. You live like this. We need to bring this out. So that was the beginning of a one and a half year journey to write this book. And this book is literally every chapter is a story, the lesson and action steps, how to Im- implement in- implement that into your life. And there's five um, you know, you know, core principles that we uh, that we write about and live about. And it actually all leads to one thing, and that's quality of life, which, as you know, that's my strap line. I love it. I mean, and that's what it should, I mean, and that's what I love about you. If, if people follow you on Insta, which is where I'm usually at, I, I'm not a big fan of the Facebook, yeah. but I love LinkedIn and Instagram and Twitter, of course. Uh, but for me, Instagram, I love it because you share, it's not just look at me, look at me, I have a book, I'm doing all these amazing things. It's your amazing family. I mean, you have a wonderful family yeah. and you share them. And it's great to see because I think that's what a true leader does is show what they that they're truly the same person when you see Steve yeah. Stephen in front of a camera talking on a Zoom call or whatever platform you're using. You know, you're in these masterminds. Here, here's you as a human being. Here's you working out. Here's yeah. you giving advice. And I love that you do that. How many? So let me ask you. I know we're jumping around on topics here, but you have your book, but you do a daily. Is it? It's a daily video, right? Am I? The Daily Purge. A daily Purge. How many are you on now? I mean, I remember when you started these things. So what are we on now? Yesterday, yesterday was 500. <laughs> I weekend about, about a year ago, so it took a little longer. But yeah, I, I just do five days a week now, daily purge of number 500. I, I just finished 501. Wow. I mean, we just wow. had a guest yesterday on our show here on Tuesday. Glenn Lundy Glenn. was on, and he has a daily show, and he does. And he planned really well. I was on his show, actually. He's a great guy. Glenn is awesome. 713 is what he had so far. I was like... I I felt crappy at 200. We just crossed 200 <laughs> uploads. Hey, but we've been going since April 15th, and we crossed 200 already. So that kind of shows you how crazy wow. we're pumping content out around here. But 
whew, it, it takes time. It's, it's hard. I mean, we're content creators. And let me ask you, and I, and I know it kind of goes subject hopping, but when you started doing this, and I ask all creators this, you didn't intend to become this content creating machine, did you? It was like, no. you just do it because you want to get your message out. It's not because you're like, hey, check out me. Look at, look at me. I'm in front actually, of the camera. <laughs> actually, I do it for me. Oh. Um, and that, that's why I don't promote it or do ads or anything. Yeah. Um, I literally do it for me. What I do is I collect my thoughts through the day and I feel like people are always wondering about what content to write. So I said, well, you know, I have content in my head all day long. So at the end of the day or the middle of the day when I have, um, you know, like a, a thought or a situation that I just went through that I want to piece out or, you know, sort of chop out, I'll say it into the camera. Why? Because if I just keep it in my head and think about it, I'm going to forget it. It'll move away. It'll, I'll think about something else. But if I put it out there, it's like transcribing it into my, my brain and my memory. And that also helps me quote the book more. It helps me you know, stay on top of my game. It helps me on stage. So I'm always used to be in front of the camera and things like that. So I literally, it's, that's why it's called the purge. Yeah. I purge my thoughts. I, I, you know, I love so it. It's, yeah. It, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It makes sense. I mean, it's basically not the same concept of to the point. This started because no. my 16-year-old wanted like healthy news. And I was like, run with it. But then it turned into, it's steady practice. It's great being in front of the camera, just like you're on stage. Yeah. I'm not on stages, but I do go as a sports analyst. I'm on all the networks talking sports. You're comfortable in front of a camera. It makes a difference. Yeah. It's the same as on stage. I mean, I've watched you as a keynote on stage. You're really good. You do own the stage. So it makes sense that you do it. And people just think, I, I know that everybody thinks it's like, oh, we like Ravain. We want to be in front of a camera. No, you think we like these lights on us and worrying about well, microphones uh, and things? No. You know, I think it's about, I think it's about, I mean, at least, I mean, I can talk about us too, because I know yeah. us too, I don't know about everybody else, but I mean, for, for me and for you, I think it's about impact. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, coming out of the military, we have that bigger, larger mission of selflessness. And this is for me, part of that mission now as a civilian, where I, I can be selfless with what I learn and what I, what, you know, what I experience, and I could pass it on to others. And if that has any kind of impact, we, we talk about radiant value in the book. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's the rib, the ripple effect, right? So how do I have a ripple effect when I just drop a pebble in front of me? How far out will that go? This is a perfect example. We know each other. Now I'm on your show, nationally syndicated, and, and it's going to go out. The ripple effect of this is going to be massive. And so that's what I mean. That's impact, man. And people talk all the time about, I need to change the world. I got to go out and demonstrate and do whatever. You're not going to change the world that way. You have to start with you. If you're, if you're against global, I mean, if you're um, for global warming or whatever it is that you want to save the planet, are you recycling? Are you wasting water? Are you, you know what I mean, turning the water off when you brush your teeth? If you're not doing that, you're not going to have an impact. <laughs> start in your world. Start in your world. See, this is why I love having you on the show. It's like we're just dropping mics everywhere we go. I mean, and, and see, besides your book, you have an amazing, it's called Hit. I always remember it because, you know, it's also yeah. in fitness, but yours is with one T, not one two. Uh, and it stands for Honesty, Integrity, and Transparency, which I love. And it's something that when I first met you, I was like, what is this? It seems like some kind. And then I kind of listened instead of like just kind of being old Eric. And it was amazing to go. It makes sense. It totally what yeah. you were saying is relevant. And it's. It makes people uncomfortable because it's yeah. the hardest thing is being honest with yourself, which that's why I love following up with learning about hit was reading your book and going, holy crap, it kind of all being honest with yourself is the most important thing. And can you talk about that? Like, how do you get leaders when you talk, especially to veterans, right. like transitioning veterans? And I think that's something we all struggle with when we get out. And you and I are a little bit older than these younger vets that you, know, you focus on. You know, one of the hardest things is being number one, humble. And number two, yeah. understanding that you have to be honest with yourself. You may have this belief with rank or whatever. You know, I talked to colonels and they're like, I started my job and I had a 28-year-old as my boss. And I'm used to having a whole cadre with me and I don't. How do you get that across as that message to be honest with yourself and what that means by definition to you with people who are like, I don't even know what that means. How do I get honest with myself? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always start by saying, okay, let's think about why why do we lie in the first place? I mean, people think when they think of honesty, they think, well, I can't tell someone, I can't, you know, I can't tell a lie. I'm talking about the little things. Why do we lie to people? We lie to them so we don't hurt their feelings, so we don't tell them the truth, right? Or we lie just to get past this one little hurdle. So it isn't like you're being malice about it, but what that does is it it trains your mind and your body, your amygdala, to accept lying as the standard, and it just keeps going from there. So you're you're not being true to yourself anymore. Um, so that's where I start. And then, and then we move on and say where hit is actually the core principles of how you go out into those five, you know, those four other areas we, we, uh, we spoke about. And the, one of the key things about hit is no expectations. So either you have an expectation and you verbalize it either to yourself or to, to the other party, or you don't have an expectation that right there will free up. I swear to you 25% of your day. 
you won't have any thoughts anymore about what's who what are they thinking and why is she looking at me like that and why is it none of that it just falls away why because you're operating from a core principle right your core principle is I'm honest with myself first I'm 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 transparent with that honesty and that's how I step into the world that's my ongoing reputation and the byproduct is integrity I, see it's this this is why we have you on. I mean, if everybody's not out here with their pens and paper right now, I don't know what you're talking about. It's Wednesday. Everybody knows tomorrow we head into our sports program, and then we get our pop culture on Friday. But this is why Wednesday is basic. Like, take your pen out and pay attention. And, and before we go to break, let's let's pump. The, let's make sure folks know we got 30 seconds here. Go to Amazon right now. Type in, you know, unleash your humble alpha and order that book. It's it's a game changer for you. Look at it right there, right there. Go do it. <laughs> And get it and get it done. You need it. This book is amazing. I have it. Trust me. You guys know I'm a geek for books. I read a book a week. This was one of those books I read and was like, this is going to be reread again. I mean, which is an incredible thing because a lot of books I don't pick back up. So thank you, you so much. You and Lane did an amazing job. We'll have more with our guest, Stephen Kuhn, after the break. Welcome back to To The Point. We have an amazing guest here today. He's a veteran, and him and a fellow veteran wrote an amazing book. I think I'm preaching it about, so you know that means if I talk about it a lot, you need to go get it. It is Unleash Your Humble Alpha. So if you're going to support amazing vets who actually work with vets, you definitely want to go grab this book. So our guest again today is the wonderful Stephen Kuhn, uh, amazing gentleman here. I, I love talking to him. Just if you need to get your brain twisted on business, that's the guy you want to go talk to. You pick up and, and get on a Skype call, Zoom, smoke signal, however you can have a conversation. Schedule one when we're done here. But, Stephen, let's jump into this. Because one thing that you love to talk about is quality of life. And I think that's a key ingredient so many people in 2020 are missing. Everybody, we're at home now, and it's been great. I mean, yeah. for me, quality of life, I, I've never been better. I have a closer relationship with my wife and a closer relationship with my children because we're here. Because I decided to look at the glass half full instead of half empty. And, and I know your right. book kind of covers about being humble and you always talk about your quality of life and it's what you judge a quality of life. Your quality of life may be different than mine or one of, of, course. of our viewers, but everybody wants to keep up with the Joneses and you don't need to. So tell us about quality of life. And what I want to know is what can you give to folks out here that are watching us going, okay, they're, they're talking about quality of life. Here's two guys, they're in their fancy blazers, you know, yay for them. <laughs> But how do I have the quality of life and how do I prevent myself from getting, I don't want to call it FOMO, more of like wanting to be what the other guy has instead of just being happy with what you have because your quality is different than my quality. What what gets you right. going could be different than me. You might not be a sports fan where mine is like, I can't wait for football right. tonight. So right. you tell me, I mean, kind of how do you, how do you kind of dissect that for the average bear? Well, you said it right. You said something very key and you said, I want to have what the other people have. I want to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. And that only happens when you're not satisfied or happy with yourself. And an and, and external gain, an external purchase that we have is something that we do to try to fill a void. And that void is usually because you have no purpose or you have a mis misguided purpose, you have no fulfillment. That all begins with one thing, and that's your identity. Who are you really? You hear CEOs say, or colonel, like you said, I'm a colonel in it. Um, who are you? I'm the colonel. No, actually, that's what you do. That's not who you are. Who are you really? Yeah. And that identity, to find that identity, that's the first chapter in our book, Find that identity is is really, really critical. Why? Because then you know automatically where your purpose is, is, is leading you. And once you have your identity and your purpose aligned, the, the purpose amplifies that identity and gives you the presence that we talked about before the show. Yeah. Right? You have a presence wherever you go. Why? Because you're the same person in every single situation. You've seen it before, right? So you you know we, we have we have we have a litmus test. We talk to a CEO and we say, if you would have your wife in the office, would she recognize you? And if you had an employee in, at your dining room table, would they recognize you? And more often than not, they don't because they take their power and their presence from a title or a position. So this is what a lot of people seek. So they pour themselves into their jobs to try to find that identity. 
but that's not an identity. That's a task. That's a job. That's, you know, so it starts with identity is that's where that comes from. And all of that then leads to quality of life. Then we have things like creating space, which means showing up wholly and fully for the person in front of you with no expectations, cookie cutter solutions, or any preconceived notions. You're there to add value. You lead with value and that's it. You show up, lead value. And that, that leads us to investing in relational capital. Investing in relational capital is the same thing. No expectations when you give, but it's on a broader scale. You help somebody with a connection or whatever. And then we talk about uh, life enterprise. I love this. Life enterprise is just like a business enterprise. We're the CEO of our life enterprise. And we answer to who? The stakeholders, right? Yeah. And how do, we, how do we deal with our stakeholders? You better leave them in a good mood, right? Yeah. So whenever you meet somebody, it doesn't matter if it's your wife, the bag lady, or the, the, the post office guy, or the lady at the, gro at the grocery store, you always leave them in a better place than when you met them. And when you do that, that creates that radiant value I talked about. And what this does, it creates a complete 360 degree quality of life bubble around you. Um, I wouldn't say bubble, maybe like a like an expansion of quality of life because you're always doing that radiant value, right? So everyone sees you, oh my God, you're Steve, hey Steve, hey Steve, blah, 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 all the time. Why? Because they always feel good when they leave. They're always, they always leave with value. I mean, who doesn't want that? Number one. Number two, it makes you as a human being giving feel fantastic. I love that. And it's true. When you leave a conversation with somebody, you should leave positive, not negative, right? I mean, yes. that is the, yep. that's how I want people to feel when they leave the show, when they leave a business conversation. I know when I've met you in person, I left walking away with good value. When we've had conversations that were business related. Elevate. Elevate. Always elevate. Absolutely. Elevate others, man. Elevate others. Well, so, yeah. so let me ask you, why do you think people struggle with that? I, I It's one of those things that it's I don't easy. understand. I get in a lot of conversations. 2020 seems to be it, where... It's either you're judged off of years ago. I, I've heard people do it, not just with me, but with others. And I'm like, good God, does nobody, I mean, people obviously change. I mean, perfect example. I know and you've worked with actors and rock stars and singers and, you know, dignitaries. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is to me like the epitome of really, yeah. if you're going to judge this dude from waking up in somebody else's house to Iron Man, you're crazy. How can you yeah. not judge? Oh, but oh, I like Iron Man because it's Robert Downey Jr. But you can't do it for the neck average Joe, the the normal right. human. You're not going to forgive him. And we all saw it early in January when Kobe passed. You still had those. Yeah. Oh, look what Kobe did one time in Denver. I'm like, yeah. but look at him now. Are we really? So why do you think people spend so much time judging others and don't want to leave positive? Don't want to leave that positive. They, you know, they say that you should leave a positive character, right? Is like that's how people yeah. remember you. Oh, hold on, you just lost me for a second. Pause. So, Steve, how do you feel about that? How do we get people to become more uplifting? And remember, when they leave the conversation, that's how they're going to be remembered. Exactly. Well, it comes down to the same thing again. If I go anywhere and I'm being disgruntled or negative, or whatever, that's because I'm lacking something. Right. So this is the deal. Most people won't realize that. They think, oh, this guy's just a butt, you know, jerk or whatever. So they'll refile their file. They will fire back or be defensive or whatever. And, you know, uh, being proud is a thing that is also a little bit sticky there because when you're proud, that actually pride actually invites attacks and attacks invite defense and defense invites another attack. So you want to be self-assured, not not prideful. Pride's OK, but not prideful. OK, so most people who are disgruntled in any way, the good thing about the humble alpha and, and to, to quote the book again is you come to a point where you know who you are, you know, you know your purpose and you're certain about where you're going. So all of that stuff on the outside has no effect on you at all. It doesn't matter what anybody says, because here's the key. Here's the key. Most people in this world and me included, we don't react to the situations in our life. We react to the thoughts about our situations in life. So we take us to ourselves on this path of nothing that is, Right, that we just start making this stuff up, like, oh my God, this guy said this about me. He's probably saying this. I wonder who else he talked to. And da, 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 da. You make this whole story up, driving yourself crazy, and it never even happened. Yeah. So when you realize you're thinking about the thoughts and not and not not about the situations in your life, just drop the thoughts and realize it's all in here. Everything you need is right in here, and anything on the outside is a distraction. Mm -mm -mm. My goodness, I can't believe our time is this close to the end. I want to keep you on forever and just have you keep talking. I just want, I'm just sitting, I don't I know it's a TV show, but I'm like plugging away. Like, dude, let's just keep Steve on. <laughs> Steven, you, thank you brother for coming on before you go. Uh, obviously people can check your books out wherever you buy books. So I would say Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble.com. I hear also sells books. I don't know. Amazon's where I know I buy books. So check out your book, unleash your humble alpha. How can folks connect with you? And I want to give Lane love because hey, he's the co-author of the book. He, he does amazing stuff for veterans. Great Green yeah. Beret. So how can folks meet up with you? You know, connect with you and learn more. Right. Well, Lane is an incredible person. I have to say, he's he's an amazing guy. He's like my he's he's my balancing weight. I guess you could say. Just we're we're true brothers. 
Um, I don't know where I'd be without him. Um, best, best is probably LinkedIn, Stephen Eugene Kuhn or Lane Ballone on LinkedIn. Facebook, um, we're under Humble Alpha Leader, I think, or Humble Alpha Book. One of the two. You'll find it. It's everywhere. <laughs> um, you can go to my page, Stephen Kuhn Official. That's all the places that you can. In Instagram, Stephen Eugene Kuhn. You know, it's just um, I don't. We don't really focus on social media that much. Yeah. We probably should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we probably should, but <laughs> it works. It works. But yeah, we appreciate you coming on the show today, man. It's been great. We need to have you back. Maybe we get both of you on. We'll try to figure out time yeah. schedules and time differences. Have you back, guys Easy. back on? I'm gonna grab a couple of copies of these books, and I'm gonna come up with some something with Stephen. We'll we'll figure something out. I'm gonna grab a couple of copies, and we're gonna give a couple away. We're gonna figure out what you have to do to get them. But uh, I want to thank you for joining us today, and everybody else. We come back from a commercial. We have another amazing guest, and that's the follow-up after this amazing guest. So, woo, he's got a tough role for you. Stay tuned. to the point i'm your host eric mitchell and we are back from commercial and like i said before we went to break we have a great show for you today and our first guest fresh out of the shoot we're talking about a couple of my favorite things one that in that blue check mark that everyone wants we all see it when we're on the gram the downfall is is you see that blue check mark mark and you really want it but the downfall is those people who slide into your dms whether it be in your spam or your general and they usually don't have a picture and they're like hey for da da da, I can get you so many followers and get you verified. Usually it's a scam, and usually you end up with a bunch of followers from a country that you've never been to who never really follow your content, and you stick out like a sore thumb. I wanted to get down to the bottom of this and give you the right information because, hey, you tune in to help your businesses grow. That's what we bring on our good guests. So today's guest is Jay Philbin, and Jay's here. Jay, welcome to our show, bud. How are you doing? Doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me on your show and super excited to get into it on verification. I actually uh, run a webinar series called Demystifying the Blue Checkmark and really excited to talk about it and hopefully offer some value and all of those you know, notions, preconceptions and scams that are out there trying to, trying to hurt people. Hoping to shed some light on it and happy to be here with you. Awesome. I love it. So we'll get started. And one of my big, you know, we both work in media and we both know the reality of booking our clients on media. It is, it's pretty easy, I would say, if you have a relationship with certain networks, but easy in the sense that you know you can get it done. It's the time frame. And my pet peeve, and it's right before air, I saw it again, and I was on Instagram, and it's this human who is saying, oh, swipe up, I can get you, and it's horrible audio, by the way, and they're walking through a parking lot, of course, with a bunch of expensive cars, because that means I'm important. Uh, I was gonna do it through a, a walk, dot, one of those junkyards, but then we thought that was humorous. I thought it was hilarious. And he's walking through it and saying, I can get you placed in all these major outlets tomorrow. Swipe up. And I'm like, no, you can't. Absolutely no, you can't. I'm like, the closest thing that you could probably do is give you $250 and you do a press release and then you'll lie and say something in Yahoo Finance is a feature. I've seen those on LinkedIn and it makes me, I read the article and I'm like, Yahoo doesn't have contributors. How did you get an article? Oh, you did a press release and you just didn't do it the formal way. You wrote an article and called it a press release. Okay, clever. Uh, it's not a real article. It's not a Forbes article or any. So how do you get around dealing with that? You're in the media. You probably have people come up to you and they're like, hey, I saw so-and-so tell me I don't need to work with you. I could take their master class and I'll get in media tomorrow. How, I mean, how do you move around with that with clients? We don't really see it that often on our side, of course, being on an agency side, working as an agent, but we work with guys like you and amazing people like you who are legit, and we deal with these kind of, we hear the question, like, but this guy said for $99, I can be in USA Today tomorrow. And I'm like, no, you can't. So but how do you get around that? How do you answer those when you get those sort of folks? Yep, and it happens all the time. The first <laughs> first question people ask are, can you get me in Forbes Forbes, and how long will it take and how much will it cost? 
And let's just nip that one in the bud right now. Top tier media outlets do not offer paid contribution. There are ways to, you know, get in with the contributors and have an arrangement where, but there's still an editorial staff looking over everything. And these things can take two to three months to come to fruition. And if you're working with somebody reliable, we're talking about $5,000 plus to buy your way into somebody's top outlets. Mm -hmm. The stuff like Yahoo Finance that you're talking about and, you know, mid, mid upper tier stuff. Yeah. You can usually buy your way in. There's ways to do it. Your, your, the clients usually don't know any better. And it's a, it's a, it's a weird shady world where there's not a lot of light being shed on PR and on media. Yeah. So it, it's like you said, it's delicate to tiptoe around that stuff, but really the best thing you can do is work with somebody with a really good story and then pitch journalists or reporters who are actually interested in the topic. Yeah. And that's that's how we've gotten all our all our success. We've worked with Forbes, New York Times, CNBC, Inc. multiple times over. We have those relationships. But like you said, I mean, there's that whole paid media kind of thing going on in the background that a lot of people don't know about and a lot of people take advantage of. And that's where you see a lot of these scammers coming through. And really, I get them, too. And part of our job is to build these relationships with people who sell some of these services. So, you know, I see it more than anyone. The, the best thing I can advise people to do is be weary. And that, that's what we do as well, especially when we're testing new relationships with somebody who says, okay, I can get you into Forbes for $1,500. It'll take a month. <laughs> if it seems like a reliable thing, we'll be like, okay, like do it. But I want the payment to be secure and I want a, full, a, a contract. Yep. And usually, usually I would say 95% of the time it does not pan out. Nope. So be weary and, and be advised about what's going on. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's important because so many people want those. And I, and I totally understand why. It's mm -hmm. great for your brand. I mean, it does help when we talk about verification. I know being in those major pubs helps, supposedly. Yes. Uh, I'll argue that any day of the week because I'm in a lot of those major pubs and I'm not verified yet. But that's a whole different subject we'll talk offline about. But We'll talk about that after, too, because yeah, I, I can probably tell you why. Yeah, oh, I'm sure I'm punished for my loud mouth. No, no. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is funny because I see it all the time and it just drives me nuts. And then you go talk to, say, the editor in charge of a major publication and they just happen to be working with your client and you start talking about it. They're like, we're not aware of it. And I've seen that happen a lot. And I know of major groups that have been busted in 2020 because 2020, we're all in the same boat. We're all depending on digital and they're hungry and thirsty for content, but they're noticing these scam artists. And, you know, and my question to you is, how do we sort our way through this, right? As, as professionals, you see people using Facebook ads and targeting now that small businesses are really trying to, they're trying to separate themselves out from the group because everybody is in the same boat now. How are you telling your clients or the prospects, like, this is why? And yes, it may cost a little bit more to do our job. And I think good PR does cost money and it's supposed yes. to, you know, because it means we're doing our job. How are you justifying that? Because there's so many people out there going, you can take your own class. It's $90 or some outrageous small price. And they're like, you'll be fine. You'll get on or you take one of these webinar courses and they supposedly have like 20 producers from shows that I, I'm like, I go look up the people sometime and I'm like, like I, wow, I work with a lot of outlets and I've never heard of that person. I'm like, where do they come from? You, and I'm sure you see it. So how do you tell your folks what's believable and what's fake in our media world? So simple rule. If they say it's guaranteed, it's fake. <laughs> it's, it's paid. <laughs> Anybody. Yeah, and you know, part of our pitch is, is we'll we'll keep pitching until we get you something. Mm -hmm. But really, if if anyone tells you anything is guaranteed, either they're paying for it or it's a media outlet that they control. And how I kind of navigate people the the price discrepancy on you know I can just go take this ninety nine dollar webinar or I can pay this guy a thousand dollars to get me on these five outlets. When you're hiring a, a media professional, someone who's been in the PR industry and has these media connections. You really, I mean, imagine if, if you were a journalist and you were hiring me or someone was hiring me to, to represent, represent them. And I would have to call in a favor. I'd be like, listen, I have this client with a really interesting story and I would love for you to take a look at this pitch and see if it's something you're interested in and writing about. It's, it's calling in a favor to a, to a friend that you've built that relationship with over time. And that's what that client is paying you for. That's where your value add is. They can go do that themselves. They can spend six months on Twitter liking and sharing things and trying to make some connections with journalists, coming up with their own pitch and do it themselves or write guest, guest uh, articles for themselves and send a polished piece to editors at Forbes. They can try and do all those things. But the reality is most of the clients I work with don't have the time. They want quick results and 
it just makes sense to hire a professional who's been doing it and has those relationships already. I love that. And before we go to the break, I want to I want to ask you one thing, uh, you know, and I know it's probably a long winded question that I'm going to ask a long winded answer. But what are some of the big trends you're seeing in social media? Now, we're talking about social media growth and everybody wants to grow. I know that's a big thing we're all talking about. But what are some trends that you're seeing now before we go to the break? You got about a minute to answer. So uh, what growth are you seeing out there? So the big trend that I would love to shed some light on is loop giveaways, also known as celebrity growth campaigns. And we actually run them uh, through one of my companies, Instalete. And it, it is a way for people to generate real followers. <laughs> uh, and, and how they work is you hire, you know, you pay accounts with over a million followers to post a giveaway post. We know we're giving away five iPhones for anyone who follows these set of rules. They're gonna go to this account and follow everybody that they're following. You know, this is something Kim Kardashian's run. You've seen major celebrities doing them, and they work. They generate 50 to 100,000 followers basically in days, and we've run them. They they really do work. However, the the, the problem with these is they're going through a, a list of accounts, hitting the follow button, and never going to see their content. So you see two problems with this. You see stagnant engagement. It either goes down or stays the same while your follower count skyrockets, and you also see a major drop-off when that campaign is over. When the giveaway results are settled, people get their iPhones, there's nothing to keep that person from remaining to follow you. So usually, depending on the quality of the account, you'll see like a 50 to 70% drop off. But huge trend happening right now, probably not going to last much longer. And yeah, something something we run and something people should definitely look out for and you know, be on the map. That, 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 that's bananas. I mean, I've seen it. I mean, we all heard it. We, I think a fire festival. I know it's probably not right, but... <laughs> I don't know why Fire Festival comes to my mind when I think of anybody doing celebrity stuff and Instagram and getting views, but it works. F. Jerry proved that. Uh, when we come back, I want to discuss Instagram verification and Facebook verification and how does someone get verified. I know that's like the number one question. Everybody sees the blue check mark and they're like, man, I want that. I need that. I have to have it. I know people on Twitter are the same way, which, I mean, that's a whole nother game. They haven't been verifying, but they are verifying, but they're not doing public verification. And I'm the guy who's like, I don't even, people are like, why aren't you verified? I'm like, that's a great question. I don't know. But uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about that. And, so, and then we're going to ask you to answer what's the biggest mistakes people or brands or individuals are making when they build their brand on social. We'll have that and more when we come back from the break. back here on to the point with our guest today jay fieldman jay the golden question and it's it's the biggie instagram verification i know facebook verification but we're not going to really focus on that because instagram verification <laughs> is the one everybody talks about like how how does someone get verified like i mean what what is there is there a trick is there an algorithm and we hear all these different things what does it take to get that sacred blue mark that means so much to so many Absolutely. And I'll just give you the spiel and then we can kind of dissect it. So verification is a tool used by Instagram to basically prevent somebody from being imitated by, and because you are notable, you're at risk of being imitated by someone else online. Now, how do you get it? Uh, essentially, there's three ways. One, you could be an actual celebrity. You could be a TV star. You could be a movie star. You could be in music and your agency will then submit for verification for you and handle that whole process. That's, you know, the the 0.1%. The other ones are people like myself, who's a, an entrepreneur, who's been in the media several times, who is notable, and you can submit through verification that way. And what they're going to do is they're going to go look through your Google News, see your media presence, and make a decision on whether you're verification worthy or not. And the other thing that you can do to get verified, sorry, I made an entire PowerPoint on this. <laughs> Media professionals like yourself, and which is why you should be verified. This is journalists and reporters, people who are at very high risk of being impersonated. And I've seen journalists and reporters with less than a thousand followers who have the blue check mark. Mm -hmm. And it's for good reason. 
Uh, and, and what, if you fit one of those three categories and you're notable, what then? So you can apply natively through the app. They have a function where you can go on there, submit your ID for verification. That's not a very you know, high probability way of getting verified. The golden ticket and the secret that most people don't know about verification, and this is where the verification companies will trick you, is there's something called a media verification panel or a, a, a Facebook panel that they give to in a certain in several certain cases. One of them is if you're an ad agency spending like $100 million a year in ads, you'll get access to this panel where you can submit somebody through the back end for verification. And anyone who is trying to sell you verification services and says they have a connection over at Facebook that's going to push it through, that's all lies. That's all steam. You should ignore it completely. What they have access to is this verification panel where they can submit you through the back end and it gets priority. However, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to get verified either. So that's kind of the spiel. You can't buy an account that's verified. Well, you can. People sell their accounts, but those get pulled down. You can't buy the blue check mark. You have to be notable and you have to be in the press. I love it. I mean, and that seems simple, but there's still people out there claiming the opposite, that it's so simple and you pay this. I, and I see the rates. I mean, some of them are outrageous. I mean, and again, they use that guarantee word, which you and I both being in the PR side of the house are like, yeah, nobody guarantees anything. I, I've never used the guarantee word. I love it when somebody asks, they're like, hey, you know so-and-so. I'm like, I don't care how many people I know. Yeah, I know quite a few people and I'm sure I could send an anchor. Uh, but yeah, I'm not guaranteeing it because I'm, yes, you could get on TV. I can't control when and saying when you can give somebody a, a check mark. And I know people who've done it. Uh, and you're right about the media people. I definitely think that's really important. There are a lot of people who would import, uh, per, impersonate us and do it. I've had a couple friends have it happen to them and it's horrible. Uh, and the same thing on Twitter, you know, people can become you and then you're lost. I mean, we interviewed a YouTuber who went through this over a million subscribers. Somebody hacked into his account and took it over and YouTube busted his chops for it instead of the, the hacker. And it's just, Jesus, it, it's just a mess. And you know, anyways, so before we go and before we play the plug-in game, I want to talk and just kind of get your top three of the biggest mistakes brands or individuals make when it comes to building a brand, especially online, on social, where everybody's at, what are three off the top of your head that you think are the most important? So three big mistakes. So the one is gonna be an obvious one that we kind of talked about earlier, and that's buying fake followers or buying fake anything yeah. to create a certain image on their social accounts. Nowadays, it's basically like uploading a virus into your Instagram account. So it's a really easy way of generating, you know, a social proof. It looks good, but there's no coming back from that once it's done. We, we can get followers for people through organic methods, but getting rid of fake followers is very hard to do. So that's my big number one. <laughs> my big number two, and this is from a PR standpoint, is don't play politics. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't play religion. Stay very consistent. Stay very in between and try not to comment on too much stuff. At the same time, if you're passionate about an issue like Black Lives Matter, like that's something that we're a little more outspoken about. However, you know, we don't talk about Trump. We don't talk about Biden. We don't talk about any of that. And we tell our clients the exact same thing that can land you in a hole very quickly. Very, very true. The third thing, uh, and, you know, just off the top of my head is going to be taking media opportunities when you're not ready. I've seen several brand faces and leaders get in front of a, a reporter or a journalist or get on the phone for an interview. And whether it be to an interview to save their own butts or to try and promote themselves, but say something stupid that lands them in trouble, that's just three that popped to the top of my head and I think is a, a good golden rule to uh, avoid and keep in mind. Mm. Those, are, those are all very solid. And, and before you go, uh, I want to make sure we get this in. How can folks connect with you? Obviously, you know a lot, and I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there going, oh my God, somebody I can finally trust who's not doing some fancy swipe up with bad audio uh, and, and not telling me to get me in, you know, Wall Street Journal front cover tomorrow uh, or get me verified tomorrow. How do folks get a hold of you and learn more? Sure. So anyone who's interested in verification or PR or social media or building a brand, the best place to reach me is on Instagram. Uh, if you type in Jay Feldman or Dr. Jay Feldman. I should be the first one that pops up with that blue check mark next to me. And if you send me a DM and say that you found, saw me on this show, I promise you 100% response rate and we'll connect there. And anything that you need, uh, you know, I, I love this stuff. I love answering questions and helping people 
through this whole process, especially dispelling any bad information or steam that's been blown up your butt from these ads that you're talking about. And I think I know, know the exact ad too. So happy to connect with any of you and feel free to reach out. Awesome. And I love it folks. And you're right. Uh, I love that our guest, you know, he runs a PR firm, does digital marketing, and he's a doctor. And he's not lying about that. And he's not a chiropractor, in case you're like, oh, he's that doctor. No, he's not. He's, you know, we didn't even talk about that. We'll have to have you back on and talk about, you know, your other side of the things you do. It's, it's interesting. People pick on me for being a Marine and being in media and an agent. And you're a doctor and you're in PR. So, see, we're all in our own little worlds. It, it works well. So, I like it. <laughs> I'm all great. over the place. Yeah, I love it. So, but I want to thank you so much, Jay, for joining us today. It's been great. Uh, we have an amazing show for coming up with the rest. We have the wonderful Stephen Kuhn coming up after the break. So thanks a bunch, Jay, for joining us. And everybody else, stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. Great show for you today. Thank you, Jay and Stephen, for joining us today. Remember, folks, you can always connect with them by just swiping down if you're watching us on YouTube or go to our social and we'll connect you with them. Uh, as always, we want to thank you for tuning in. If you would like to be a guest, know a guest, have a complaint, have a compliment, send us an email at hello at tothepointtv.com. Follow us on all the socials. As always, on behalf of our entire To The Point team, I want to thank you. As always, I'm Eric Mitchell. Be safe, be strong, be smart, and God bless America. Let's get to the point with Eric Mitchell. 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 Yeah. Let's get to the point. Taking a back seat, you're never gonna get a past T. Everybody running from it, it's a stampede. But he's only like this man who took that knee. Mr. Mitchell's way too crafty. To the ball.